Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 230, recorded Monday, December 21st, 2015. The Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Triangulation is brought to you by Headspace. Train your mind for a healthier, less stressed life. Download the free Headspace app and begin their Take 10 program for 10 days of guided meditation at headspace.com slash triangulation. And by Texture, the mobile app that lets you access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere using your phone or tablet. For your free 30-day trial, visit texture.com slash triangulation. And by audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. It's time for triangulation. I think this is our last show of 2015, isn't it? Next week, a uh, best of. Uh, so, hey, welcome. It's good to see you all. This is the show where we get together with uh, the best and brightest in technology, and we have some fun talking. And uh, this one I couldn't resist. When this came across my desk, I said, we must interview Simon Monk. He's written many books. This is his newest, The Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse from the northwest of England. Simon Monk joins us on Triangulation. Hi, Simon. Hi. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Thank you. It's not nice your to meet first, you, Julia. Not your first book. Uh, you've written a series of books about evil geniuses. Yes, so, I've done a few for the um, <laughs> for the tab series that they have on. They have an evil genius series. The evil That's genius. It. Fifteen dangerously mad projects for the evil genius. Yeah, uh, I wanted to call it dangerous projects for the evil genius, but they they they, they, they didn't go just, for they're that. They're just mad, so not dangerous. Yeah. Unless you make them so. <laughs> you can see it's. Well, there's a coil gun in there. Yeah. Well, hey, and see. And a trebuchet. Ah. Yeah. What could be more madly dangerous, dangerous than a trebuchet? <laughs> also, yeah. he's done cookbooks for Raspberry Pi, for Arduino, for Photon, for the Beagle Bone. I mean, you have been, you have been in the maker space for some time now. How did you get to be a maker? Um, I've always been interested in electronics as a hobby. As a, as a teenager, I used to go to the public library and get out practical wireless and then there were little circuits you could make up with um, strip board and I used to just you know, follow the designs and make something up and if I was really lucky, I'd end up with a metal detector that would detect a car if it was half an inch under the ground or, Ooh. you know, not, not, <laughs> not terribly sophisticated projects, but Fun. I've always enjoyed it as a hobby and... Um, had a career in software and then um, ended up coming full circle. I started playing with Arduino, um, decided to write down what I was doing as I was learning about it, and then reorganized it a bit into a book format and pushed it out to a, publish a few publishers. And um, McGraw-Hill came back and said, can you repurpose it for their Evil Genius series, which is my first one, the 30 Arduino projects for the Evil Genius. Uh, and then since then, I've just been... Um, writing more. We kind of rid the wave, rode the wave on the Arduino popularity. So it was good timing. And then we managed to do the same thing on the Raspberry Pi. So I sort of, um, now I'm working past three years, I've been full time just writing books, which is why there's so many of them, because if you haven't got anything else to do, you can <laughs> rattle through them fairly quickly. It helps to live in the northwest of England, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's raining all the time, what else are you going <laughs> to do? Soon to come uh, from O'Reilly, the Raspberry Pi cookbook. Practical Electronics for Inventors and uh, a Make Action, which should be a lot of fun. I love this one, though. This is from No Starch Press. They're, uh, actually, they're, they're right up the, the coast from us, and I'm a huge fan of, of what they do. Actually, they're in San Francisco now, but they, I think they started up in the Santa Rosa. Huge fan of what they do because they have a little quirky personality, as you might gather from the title. Whose idea was the zombie apocalypse, Simon? Um, it was actually my wife's idea. Um, we, we both like watching The Walking Dead and, um, you know, a lot of any kind of zombie films and things. And um, it sort of struck me that the heroes, you, you get warrior heroes in the zombie films and the zombie series, but you don't often get maker heroes. And I sort of, it's, it's my contention that actually you'd want a few makers there. Absolutely. Perhaps not a 
you know, after you've sort of dealt with the immediate stress, <laughs> then you want to kind of make yourself comfortable and you want somebody who's going to be able to generate some electricity for you and somebody who's going to set up a few alarms and some surveillance and some communication projects so that you can um, deal with the threats and make your life a bit more easy. You know, this is one of the reasons I'm, I love the MAKE movement and I'm so supportive of it is, um, you know, kids, I think, nowadays are big consumers of stuff, software and hardware. But I think that they often, in fact, we, nobody, really adults even, don't really know how they're made, where, you know, what's going into them. <laughs> and it really is, I yeah. think, not because there's going to be a zombie apocalypse, all signs point to no, but... Yeah because it's good to know how this stuff works and maybe a, a percentage of them will actually start making stuff so that there's something to consume in the next generation. So I really, I really yeah. like that. And I love, by the way, I love it that you do software as well as hardware uh, because yes, yeah. that's part of the fun of Arduino and Raspberry Pi is not just is. downloading somebody else's code, but, but adding your own. Yeah, and also if you come from um, a big software environment like I did and you're used to trying to wrangle huge amounts of code and avoid the chaos that usually ensues. And you come and work on a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino and you're writing yourself 30 lines of code and then yeah. you're done. It's just so much more manageable and pleasant and easy <laughs> than um, the big software life. And it's so great. It, it's satisfying because it does something. Yeah. Immediately, exactly. Right? It, it, it's so immediate. It, yeah. I mean, I've seen this with kids when um, they get a, an LED to blink, uh, that's really, you know, in software terms, there's nothing really much going on there. But it's so much more interesting than having some text appear on the screen if you're learning to program. Yeah. It's, it, there's, there's just something about physical computing that really grabs people's attention. So it's great to see the maker movement encouraging all of these things. And I go to the Bay Area Maker Fair um, most years. That's my oh, sort good. Of trip over to the States. Oh, good. And it's just such a fantastic Isn't event. It? Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's a lot of kids. A thing. A lot of kids yeah, are excited exactly. by the notion that they can put their get their hands on and do something. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean it's great to see. It's good stuff. This would be a wonderful um, book to get for somebody who wants to do projects with their kids. It is going to need some so, adult yeah. supervision. Uh, you know, a kid 13 or 14 can probably do most of this stuff, but I think it's going to need some adult supervision, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I always try and put a bit of a range of um, project levels of difficulty into into any of my books so that there's some you know you can start with something fairly straightforward and then if you can really get into it then you can do one of the more complicated arduino builds yeah uh and and for those who are, uh, are attracted by the zombie in the name good news the first chapter covers zombies in great detail the <laughs> kinds of the zombies the kinds of uh, are zombies really dead the kinds of attacks one must suffer how long will the zombies be around uh, <laughs> and I like this graph, which is, I, it, I, where did you get this? Because it's hysterical. Uh, oh, I, I, I made that up. I, <laughs> I love it. Here it is. This it's, is it's, it's not terribly scientific, I don't think. The zombie population is, as one hopes, the dotted line. The human population is the solid line. As you can see, initially, in the first year or two, the zombies may seem to be winning, but in the long run... They go away and the, and the humans come back. And that's why you need this book. Yeah, The Science of Zombies. Yep. Very scientific. <laughs> I like that. It's, it's a graph. <laughs> yeah. Food and fuel, water, how to kill a zombie. This is fun. Great and great cartoon illustrations, too. I have to uh, praise your, your illustrator because uh, who, who, who yeah, did the illustrations? Yeah, they did a great job. Uh, I, I'm afraid I don't know no the name starch. of No starch. Somebody that no starch fan. Um, they, they are terrifically talented. Yeah, it's really, really, really fun. Things. It's really, yeah. really fun. Uh, so it's, it's not, you know what? It's funny. It's not even, uh, I think they want to they want to remain anonymous, perhaps afraid that zombies may retaliate. Uh, because I don't... <laughs> there's I don't, a credit in there somewhere. There's somewhere me. there's a credit. Um, yeah. So we're going to take a break and come back, and let's talk about some of uh, the projects. Of course, remember, after the zombie apocalypse... You don't have much. You certainly don't have infrastructure. So we're going to have to start with making your own electricity. We'll talk about that yeah. in just a little bit. Simon Monk is our guest. The book, the brand new book from No Starch Press, The Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. I love the idea of starting from scratch. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. it is. And yeah. I, I think kids will like it. <laughs> no, I'm listening to uh, Simon's beautiful voice. 
And he reminds me of somebody that I listen to every morning, a guy named Andy, Andy Puttington, who is, okay. do you know, do you know uh, no, Headspace? No, I don't, no. Andy is a former monk, uh, a, a brilliant meditation teacher from the UK, and he's created a company called Headspace that makes it easy for you to get the benefits of meditation, to eliminate stress, anxiety, even fear and anger from your life, to be able to sleep better, as he says, to love better and to live more. And I don't want you, when I say meditation, to think, oh, you've got to fold your legs into a pretzel and you've got to say, oh, this isn't that at all. This is, this is so great. These are guided meditations, 10 minutes a day, and I have come to love it. I look forward to it. I come away from it centered and feeling great. This is part of my new healthy lifestyle. Exercise, a good night's sleep, meditation, removing stress from your life. This is really, I think what we're all learning is key to a good life. And this makes it easy. Headspace Take 10 program is 100% free. It's a way to experience the benefits of meditation to get a sense of it. And I think after your 10 free meditation sessions, you probably will want more, but that's up to you. So try it for free. Meditation is rooted, as you probably know, in thousands of years of tradition. But what you may not know is there are many hundreds, actually thousands of scientific studies that show absolutely beneficial effects, improving focus, relationship harmony, decreasing anxiety, decreasing stress. If you want to know more, Andy Puttycomb actually has a great TED Talk, very popular, five and a half million views last time I checked. And he's the guy, why don't you, do you have a little audio? I think you do. To this. help you in those meltdown this, moments. This is his great voice. Now you can track your progress and stats, buddy up with friends, and if you manage to meditate several days in a row, you'll even get rewarded with bonus gifts. It's fun. They oh. gamify it. And Andy is, Andy makes you smile. Andy is completely unassuming, completely natural, relaxed. He's, he's, he's the kind of person you want to hear in your ears as you're getting rid of all the stress. Very many famous people use it. I use it. Emma Watson, Jared Leto, Gwyneth Paltrow. Four million people have discovered Headspace. I want you to try it right now. Download the free Headspace app. It's on iOS. It's on Android. It's, it's I, you know, I have it everywhere. And what's nice, you sign into your account so you can use any device. I play it uh, uh, through my tablet into my stereo so I can listen. And it will remember where you left off so you continue your program. Try their Take 10 program, 10 days of guided meditation. Headspace.com slash triangulation. This is free. And you can train your mind for a healthier, less stressed life. I really love it. I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been a lot. I haven't been so cranky lately. <laughs> since, <laughs> since July, I started doing this. I love it. Headspace.com slash triangulation. Now, zombies will make you cranky. Simon, <laughs> Simon Monk is our guest. Yeah, they certainly will. <laughs> Although after you get rid of them, it's quite peaceful because there are no <laughs> cars on the road. Although they, as you point out, make an excellent source for materiel for your projects. Uh, yeah, yeah, car batteries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you actually, you actually talk about that. So uh, you start off by generating electricity, which is really fun. You actually have a project uh, involving a bicycle, uh, bic well, solar. We'll start with solar, if you could yeah. find a solar panel. And, yeah. and connect it up to a car battery. Um, did you build all of these? Yeah, all of them. And I think, um, yeah. I want to see your workshop. It's easier to get parts after this. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I don't have much of a workshop, actually. It's, um, I, I sort of kind of just manage with uh, working on a desk. None of the projects involve an awful lot of, sort of sawing or sort of heavy oh, that's good. cutting or anything like yeah. that. It's mostly sort of adapt things as simply as you can. This is nice because there's, a uh, for all the projects, a nice easy to read checklist so you know what you need to make the project. Uh, yeah, with pre, pre and post apocalypse sources of components <laughs> and things. <laughs> if you need a bike, scavenge it, yeah. Uh, <laughs> or you might find one uh, under a zombie. This, this one I really love. I want to do this. Uh, it's, I, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it is um, it's a car alternator and, and a bike that you've taken the uh, the tire off and the inner tube off, and then you just you got it. The difficulty is finding going to be finding a belt. Um, you can buy them on eBay for about ten dollars or something, but um, finding one post-apocalypse, you might have to hunt around for that a little bit. Living where uh, you do, is it hard to find? I mean, do you have an electronic store around the corner? 
Yeah, well, I, I do. I'm quite lucky in that I've got that there are a couple of places where I can get uh, post apocalypse, I could easily go and break in and get everything I need. <laughs> but pre apocalypse, uh, think... you could even use American or uh, English, <laughs> British pounds to uh, get in there and buy something. Exactly. Yeah, yeah it, that, that always works better, I find, if you give them money when you take goods. <laughs> they tend not to like it if you don't. <laughs> uh, uh, but that, yeah. see, that's, I think in some ways you're fortunate then because uh, un unfortunately, Radio Shack, which was uh, for a long time the source of many of these uh, tools and instruments, uh, has disappeared in the United States, been replaced, and basically become a cell phone store. Um, yeah, and you know, they're, gone, really. if you're lucky enough to live in a in an area where you have a parts store like this, that's great. But the good news is, thanks to Lady Ada and AdaFruit.com, and so there's so many sites. eBay, as you point out, even could be a great yeah. resource. So. Yeah, yeah. I had, um, talking of um, Radio Shack, I actually put all the Radio Shack codes in and then just before publication, oh. <laughs> they went bust. Oh. So I had to go through and take them all out and um, try and find other sources. Isn't for them that and sad? Things, so. I think Radio it Shack, is sad. they had such an opportunity. Had they realized, what, you know, that their natural audience was growing, not shrinking, and that the makers yeah. were emerging... They could have become a maker space in every community. There were thousands of stores and a source for these parts. And I think that would be a vital business, I think. Yeah, I think they would. I mean, they used to have them over here in the UK. And I, it was one of the, used to be one of a few places you could just walk in and buy yourself a transistor and, right. or a diode if you needed it. Uh, and it's, there is a place near here where I can do that. But um, by and large, those, those kinds of shops are disappearing and it's all online so but i mean I, they did i think realize sort of close to the end and they there were a, a, they had a few a sort of attempts at sort of trying to get you know give the maker movement what they wanted but i think it was sort of too late really yeah. to to make that work and really in a way they they at least in the states they began to abandon the do it yourselfers early on they decided they didn't want you know bins of resistors and transistors yeah, and things and they that started... section of the store got smaller and smaller yeah. and smaller didn't it yeah, <laughs> very time sad. On. <laughs> yeah. Very sad. that was that was a missed opportunity they became the kind of the junkie gadget and remote control gadget and phone store uh, yeah here's your alternator <laughs> this this is so great i think these are so much fun oh my gosh i want to do this on my exercise bike <laughs> and th what's nice about yeah. starting this way is I think uh, kids will learn where electricity comes from, right? Because this, yeah. this is essentially how all electricity is generated in some form or fashion with the energy applied and, to an alternator, right? Exactly. And also, um, particularly if you're using the pedal-powered one, exactly how much effort is required yes. to generate a decent amount of electricity. Because, <laughs> you, you know, you turn a TV on and you think, oh, I could easily power a TV. No big well, deal. Yeah, you're not going to generate 250 watts. <laughs> you might you might just power about power a little TV, but um, yeah, yeah. it's uh, it, you know there's quite a lot of energy involved in generating. You're talking a couple of amps, maybe three amps, with a few, as you put it, furious pedaling. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you might you have to pedal furiously and quietly. That uh, you might be able to charge your iPad at that rate. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's right. about it. Uh, this is great. So now you've taught. It. So I, I and I like the pro the progression here. So I've learned now. Okay, okay. now I can generate electricity. Yeah, uh, now you've got some electricity in your batteries. What are you going to do with it? Is yeah, the next step. this is good too. Using um, uh, because you're using car batteries, you, you you also have to do 12 volt conversion and how to connect. Yeah. Yeah, yeah th there's lots of car accessories actually that that you could just use straight off right. uh, if you right. car batteries. Again, those old abandoned automobiles on the exactly. motorway, those are fabulous resources. <laughs> <laughs> they are. <laughs> Push the dead people out of the way and go get their cigarette lighter <laughs> adapter. Yeah. Yeah. Work quickly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, this is fun. A, a battery monitor. Uh, that's you know a lot of times you'll go to the store and buy one of those, but but you you can quite easily make uh, one of your own. This yeah, is Arduino powered, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, just a, a nice little you know starter Arduino project, really. Yeah, and again, uh, a little bit of code, not a lot, but I think in this case you download the code uh, from the notes. Yeah, all, all the code is uh, yeah. yeah available for download. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you want to know what's going on, and I, I really encourage people to uh, to mess with the code. Because this is something yes. you can do without, you know, too much risk and, uh, and, and learn. I love it that you give the code. I think that that's really fantastic. And this yeah, is so I think people... 
Sorry. Right. Yeah, I think people like to um, fix the code as well because they're quite, well, I'm not saying there's bugs in it. Is it but buggy? It improves the code. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not buggy. <laughs> but people, you know, it can always be improved. It can always be made a bit better. So you do, all the code is on GitHub. So you nice. find that people nice. will come back to you with, you know, pull requests saying, you know, what about doing this because the script, the display is flickering a bit or what have you. So people will, people will contribute, which is yeah. nice. Now, uh, since you don't, it sounds like you don't have a, a garden full of projects like these that you must dis you must take them apart after you make them. <laughs> yeah, some of them I do. Um, the uh, I needed the bike again, so I had to, to put the bike back together. <laughs> Uh, so, but the alternator is still sitting in the garage. Some of the things that would go back on eBay. What does your the wife? What is, does your wife think of all this? <laughs> she's very tolerant. Yeah. No, it's great. Yeah, uh, she's the same. Yeah, and you and but she has you home, and uh, yeah. you're puttering, but you're exactly, puttering to yeah. good to good good effect. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> what does she, What does she do? Um, well, she's running a, a business um, selling kits that go with the ah. books. And, um, Monk makes monkmakes.com. That's so, fantastic. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it's great. So we've been we've had a very busy time. We've spent most of the run up to Christmas putting things together into boxes and sending them off to Amazon. Do you, uh, so you so. ship to the US or you sell on Amazon? So that makes it easy. We, we sell on Amazon.com yeah. and Amazon.co.uk. Oh, that's great. Uh, yeah. So here's monksmakes.com, books and other bright ideas. This is very clear. You've really made this a cottage, uh, cottage industry here. Yeah, uh, yeah. All the projects yeah. that are in the book, uh, you, can, uh, you can download or, or rather uh, buy, um, like the yeah, Rasp, there's a, there's Raspa a, Robot. There's yeah, for, no, for the zombie book, there aren't really any kits because it's a bit difficult to ship car batteries and alternators. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the whole point is that you should wait until after the apocalypse, really, before you before you start yeah. um, taking these big heavy oh, heavy I'm things. I'm so glad you're doing this because you know companies that used to do this uh, mm. uh, have really kind of stopped. I think for fear of liability, that you know it's hard, like the hacking electronics starter kit. You know, there's lots of companies. Uh, one of our sponsors, Little Bits, that sell it kind of oh, yeah. pre-made and pre and easy to assemble. I want to solder. I want to get my kids soldering. So this is yeah. a, this is really great. This is um, this is kind of down and dirty, the real deal, and I'm glad that they still uh, sell this kind of thing. Uh, you still sell this kind of thing. Yeah, uh, thanks. Yeah, raspberry. The raspberry squid is fun. Here's your beagle bone stuff. But I I think I'm gonna get the hacking electronics starter kit. It's got, right. got a little voltmeter. Oh, come on, Andy. you got to get more of those packaged up. I think you sold out for the holidays. <laughs> we did on some of them. Oh, <laughs> And it's too late now. We can't I get the stuff Andy. over. I knew I would do that. Simon, I'm sorry. I've had Andy in my ears for so long. I'm calling him Andy. His voice was a bit similar, wasn't it? It's. Uh, I don't know. He, I, <laughs> similar it, pitch. It might be. And also, I think he had a southern accent. Yeah. He, yeah. Was it southern? Okay. I couldn't identify the accent. It was a different accent. Yeah. More Cockney, I think. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's let's go now. One of the things that happens with zombies, they're sneaky, and yeah. even post-apocalypse, once we've rid ourselves of the vast majority, there's always the risk a zombie will approach and sneak into camp. So alarms are the subject of chapter four, yeah. uh, because you can't always say a zombie is going to be groaning and moving slowly. It really depends, you know. These days, it zombies does. zombies can move more quickly. So here's exactly. a tripwire. Isn't that fun? I love this. There is absolutely no practical use for a tripwire, but <laughs> except in the case of apocalypse. But fun for kids, I think. Right? Kids are always looking to make like spy stuff. Yeah, uh, it's a nice, easy one to make that as well because it it uses um, just a little micro switch and a, and a car horn and a, again a car battery or any kind of 12 volt battery if you don't want to um, yeah. be <laughs> getting an entire car battery. And, and by yeah. the way, you can always scavenge one from a... Don't do this at home, kids. A microwave <laughs> oven. Mom and Dad may <laughs> not be thrilled to find that the micro switch has been removed from... But you know what's nice about it is that they see the actual... That these are used all the time. This is not, you know, random yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> Isn't it dangerous to dis disassemble a microwave? For some reason, I feel like there might be a giant capacitor or something in there. Uh, I don't yeah. think it's big capacitors, but you do 
clearly you want to be careful that it doesn't act, accidentally get turned on. <laughs> <laughs> and don't reassemble it and put it back in the kitchen. That, absolutely. Very, very high voltages. I think it's yeah. four kilovolt. Huge right. transformer are generating about four kilovolts. Well, so I think. that's so, yeah. fun. Yeah, so you've got to be a bit careful. Kind of go through yeah. that. It's kind of fun, yeah. Just yeah. Be, this is one to do with mom and dad or... or, or oh, definitely, yeah. yeah. Identify the terminals on the micro switch. So this is kind of... I like this. Instead of just buying everything, we can see what it looks like. Here's a scavenged car horn. That's what's going to happen when I trip the wire. Yeah. yeah. That's going to be noisy. Probably going to bring a lot of other zombies along, actually, isn't it? <laughs> maybe, maybe it's not the most practical of projects. <laughs> oh, but for fun. This is so... Fun, so fun, so fun. By the way, it says uh, it, car horns are really loud, so it's best not to test this out in an enclosed space and warn your fellow survivors before you try it. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, yeah. See, this is what kids want, loud noises. Always good. Absolutely. Oh, I'm gonna, I want to build a tripwire. <laughs> Just don't do it in the house. Isn't that fun? Now, what's a PIR or P-I-R alarm? It's a passive infrared. It's um, infrared detects it detects movement. Ooh! So these are so, the kinds of things in home security systems. Well, you don't usually yeah. have trip wires, but you would have a peer, for yeah. sure. Yeah. That's nice. And where to scavenge those from? Just take apart your old intruder alarm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or somebody else's. Yeah. Most of Better yet, won't go and, at all. You can yeah. just walk in and take what you like. <laughs> Many unoccupied homes after the apocalypse. Uh, this is exactly. where they don't yeah. need well, it Well, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, surveillance. Make a camera. We'll talk more. This is fun. The book is The Maker's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. Simon Monk, our guest. This just came out from No Starch Press. It's not too late, I think, for Christmas. Uh, if you can find, you know, an old card part, uh, you know, pick and pull, you could probably make a lot mm -hmm. of the things. Get, you know what to do? Put this in a box with an old car horn, a micro yeah. switch, and a string and say, what could we do with this? It would, I think this would be the greatest, <laughs> the greatest gift for uh, the holidays. Good idea. More with Zombie Apocalypse author. <laughs> I like saying that. Simon Monkey, just a bit. Our show today brought to you by Texture. Talk about a holiday gift. I remember every year it was really uh, kind of special for me. Um, my grandmother gave us National Geographic as a subscription every year. And then when my kids were little, their grandfather did the same thing, continued the thing. And, and so it's a wonderful gift, but there's a problem. <laughs> the basement full of National Geographic magazines, the clutter and the expense I got a better way, the modern way, and a great gift, Texture. Texture is like Netflix for magazines, one flat monthly rate, and you get subscriptions to dozens of magazines, including National Geographic, The New Yorker, Esquire, Wired, Sports Illustrated, People, Parents, and on and on and on. You can, you can watch the, read the magazine is exactly as it is on the newsstand. And by the way, not just the current issue on the newsstand, but back issues as well. I love that. But you can also, there's extras like video that you don't get in the magazine. And I have to say, I, I love magazines, but usually in any given magazine, there might be one or two articles. I love that. I get the New Yorker every week, but there's one or two articles, and then I feel guilty about the clutter, the, the, you know, the, the landfill, the waste. This is so much better. And if you're looking for you know, articles. They have a great curated collection system that allows you to delve deeper into all the best magazines. So no more wasting time finding the best premium content. Their editorial team recommends stories based on your interests. They know what you look at and they say, oh, you know, you read this Eddie Redmayne, you're going to love reading this article. I use it for recipes, eating well. Uh, there's so many good cooking magazines. And I confess, I confess, Sometimes I'll dabble a little into the People magazine, the Entertainment Weekly, the Gossips. It's a good way to get those without actually admitting that you read them. Full access to the top magazines across just about every interest. Texture.com slash triangulation. 30, uh, 30 days free for yourself, but also this would be a fantastic gift for a loved one. A gift they'll open every day. How do you like that, huh? Get, see what I did there? I love it. Texture, <laughs> T-E-X-T-U-R-E dot com slash triangulation. We thank them for their support of our triangulation show. We're walking through survival in the zombie apocalypse, and fortunately we have a manual, the maker's guide to the zombie apocalypse. Yes, sure, 
Sure, the sheriff with a shotgun is going to be a useful friend and ally, but after, who's going to get the infrastructure built up? You are, uh, if you have That's this right. point. Right. Simon Monk is our guest. I love this. Uh, is it how do you do? Uh, so there was an Arduino. There's some Raspberry Pi. It's a mix of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's all um, quite a few of the projects are you know like the Tripwire are very straightforward and don't require any kind of processor. But um, where I use the processor, it's either Arduino or Raspberry Pi. Two of our favorites, of course. And you know what's yeah. great? People, I think people buy Raspberry Pis. And then are looking for things to do. I know that's what happened to me, right? It's, well, I've got an Arduino. Yeah. Now what? Right? So this is fun that's because right. yeah. you can, for instance, uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, surveillance system. Uh, why use a laptop to create a surveillance system when you can use an inexpensive $35 Raspberry Pi? And, uh, yeah. and, and this is, you tell, you say that the, the Pi 2 is a good choice. Um, or if you if you can, the Model A and A plus not ideal because video is going to be a little tough. You show how to use it with DC power, which I love, so I could power it off that car battery we've got, or or maybe that yeah. bicycle generator I have. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you wouldn't want to pedal the whole time. That would kind of defeat. The <laughs> no, purpose. that'd be exhausting, yeah. wouldn't yeah. it? <laughs> and you're using uh, Raspbian, which is a Raspberry Pi operating system um, based on Debian, is it? It is. It's based on Debian. It's the, it's the official. There's quite a few distributions you can push right. on Raspberry right. Pi, but but Raspbian is the official one, and it's the, it is the most used, and it's it's quite nice actually. They've they've kind of included a lot of things in the distribution that you would otherwise have to load up as soon as you wanted right. to do anything with the right. GPIO pin. So that's so good. your your software uh, is all in C, or what what language do you? Uh, it looks like C. Yeah, all the Arduino code is in C, yeah. and. Uh, Python for the Raspberry Pi code. Love Python. Oh, yeah, there's the Python. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, speaking of Python, there's also another uh, animal from the menagerie, a squid, which is really helpful for the GPIO. Yeah, it's just a, it is just an RGB LED, but it provides a nice, um, you can just plug it straight onto the GPIO pin so you don't have to mess around soldering. It's got built in series resistors and, and things. It's, um, it, it's a design I put on, um, I put it on GitHub actually with Good. a little library with instructions on how to make your own, but if you don't want to make your own, you saw then them, um, we, we have some ready-made ones yeah. that make so, so. That's nice. Um, and get, I love it that you put the code on GitHub, frankly. That's, uh, that, that makes it a lot easier. And it's funny that people are committing to it, too. I love that. That's, yeah. That's, no, really, that, that's really great. <laughs> Here, if you have a, an old webcam lying around, you can use that in your zombie surveillance system. This is something I think a lot of people might, might really want to build. What's the total cost? I guess if you have some stuff lying around it, you know, but if you had to go yeah. out and buy it all? I think um, you probably, I think even a surveillance system, you're probably not looking at more than maybe $100 to sort of get everything. This is probably one of the most expensive projects in the Yeah, in I the think book. so, yeah. yeah. But there you go, that's, you see, you got one. That, that, that's actually my wife in a mask. <laughs> <laughs> She is really game. I love that. <laughs> she's she says, "All right, Simon, if you're going to do it, let's." Well, it was her idea. Exactly. Yeah, she's got to commit to it if she thought of the book's idea. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we'll give Linda some yeah. credit on this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know what the neighbors thought. <laughs> <laughs> what are they doing now? <laughs> what? What? Yeah. What? Add remote access. Detect open doors. So a little more kind of security system focused stuff uh and yeah again trying to use sort of ready-made modules and things you could scavenge where possible so not it's not a kind of complete original from scratch build but some um, sort of get a hold of things okay whose house did you pillage did you? <laughs> come on that's actually still in place that's that's in our that's like the side door to our garage is uh, it's got that lock but it's it, all so. scar is scored up did you do that for the purposes of the book I love it. Like, like some no, zombie it, was scratching no. it. It does look like that, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should be worried. <laughs> I didn't notice that before. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. This is, this, you know, it's, I've written a few computer books in my time. And I really, uh, yeah, when I you, saw. yeah, like 13. When you've done it, not nothing like you, but when you've done it, you really appreciate what goes into this. This is a lot of work. You had to build these and photograph them. Great illustrations. Yeah. Uh, this is really well done. I love the the shopping lists. 
Um, and oh. this is, by the way, praise to No Starch Press. I think this is they're a great oh, yeah. publisher for stuff like this. They have a quirky sense of humor that they really do. helps. Yeah. You've all seen these on our home, our own home security systems or at work on their security. It's a read switch, it's called. That's neat. So you're learning, I think you're learning a lot of stuff here. Environmental. Yeah, the idea is that it's, um, you know, there's a bit of educational stuff yeah. in there. If you make things, you can't help but find out a little bit about how they work, can you? And That's you what I of, want, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here's how to, how to learn how a fire alarm uh, works. You're actually going to take apart a smoke detector. And, uh, yeah. and learn a little bit. The idea bit. is to make it more um, so you can tie it into a sort of integrated alarm system so you can be alerted that there's a fire without it um, attracting oh. more zombies. You can't <laughs> have that big loud sound. This is no. good. Danger radiation. It's kind of a minor amount of radiation, but I like it that we're learning a little bit about how the smoke detector works and why, you know, why there's yeah. uh, some radioactive materials in there. So that's yeah. good. Um, here's... Uh, how to do a little soldering. Not required for a lot of the projects, but certainly That's right. useful. Yeah. yeah. So for some of them, yeah. this soldering. And this is an Arduino project we're doing here. Yeah. So, so a little the secret. Arduino ones tend to be the most advanced, sort of technically. It's funny because I always think of the Raspberry Pi as kind of more of a general purpose uh, computer. Yeah, and I tend to use it more like that in the book. So the surveillance camera, I mean, you could do, you could use a laptop in place right. of the Raspberry Pi. There's, right. there's a few points where I use the Raspberry Pi GPIO pins, but mostly when it comes to interfacing to hardware, I tend to use an Arduino for this, this kind of thing. It's kind of more designed for that I.O., I guess. It is, yeah. yeah. I mean, the Raspberry Pi can do it, but, um, you know, an Arduino, it turns on, it's working instantly. A Raspberry Pi has to boot up. So those, those seconds might be precious if there's a zombie <laughs> coming through the door. <laughs> this is awesome. The Raspberry Pi Control Center. Oh, man. I could see a kid, 13, 14, 15, building every single thing in here. Just like, because of the narrative around it, uh, mm -hmm. really kind of getting into it and saying, yeah, I'm going to protect the house. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, this is my job. Mom and Dad, yeah. look, a flash distractor. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> useful against uh, little sisters as well as zombies. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. How did you come up? Please remember to ask permission before you yeah, dismantle yeah. your parents' car. <laughs> yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But this is fun. It's with a, you start with a disposable uh, camera, which is really great. Yeah. How do you, you have get... to watch those things. They're vicious. They, oh, they, I know. You, when you're taking them apart, big... if you touch that capacitor, you, they give you a hell of a jolt. There's a, a big battery in there, yeah. What, yeah. Uh, where do you come up with these ideas? Um, I think it, it's sort of pressure of having to write the book. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're, motivator. You're, but your, your imagination really, uh, it was great because, yeah, a sound distractor now, a flash distractor. Um, yeah, I think it helps actually having it's a good topic. Premise. So, yeah. you know, you've got, you, you've got a, a scenario that you've got to deal with. So right. you, you can naturally think of things that would try and that would help in, that, in the uh, situation. Uh, by the way, I've got to say, Simon is not resting. He's actually working, as I mentioned, on three more books even as we speak. Are you going to take a little time off for the holidays? Yes, I've, I've finished now for the holidays. Oh, good. So, yeah, oh, I'm going good. to have a little break and then uh, do some more between... I, I hope you'll do some more with No Starch along these lines because these are this is really funny. It's really fun. Yeah, they're they're fun. Yeah. They're a good. Um, they're really fun publishers to work with because they do they make they make individual books, which is nice because a lot of places will churn out. It's not a series. You know, a a yeah. series that look yeah. exactly the same, whereas yeah. No Starch will do something that's completely individual. Each one's handmade, so to speak. All yeah. right, I'm going to give a, take a break and I'll give you a chance to come up. Uh, with your favorite project, which one you enjoyed making the most? Are any okay. still are any still in place? Uh, the all garage door. Stuff. That's right. it. That's the only one I think. That, right. <laughs> uh, we. I don't think this would be a very good audible book, an audio book. Are you going to do an audio book for this? It'd be very hard to follow <laughs> no, along. It would, I, think. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it would work. <laughs> but you know, so many books. Uh, we. I listen to almost all all my books. I listen to now because it's a great okay. way. To uh, to read, but yeah, do-it-yourself books, coding books. I, they do have some books on coding. I think that's not yeah. ideal for the audio format. But audible mm -hmm. books are great for when you want to relax, when you want to learn. I listen to a lot of history. Just got David McCullough's amazing book about the Wright brothers. Uh, Audible.com is the website. You should go and check, take a look. So many wonderful 
books there. And I have a deal. I'm going to get you a free book. So while you're browsing, uh, this is an opportunity to see, you know, uh, if, if meditation is your interest, there's lots of books. Here's the five keys to mindful communication. I, uh, I listen to a lot of uh, health and diet books there, but my favorite is history and, of course, science fiction. And one of the things that's great about Audible is, there, is they have a, a, a project, the Audible Frontiers Project, where they're taking classic science fiction books that were never audiobooks, stuff from Heinlein and Asimov uh, and, uh, you know, Piers Anthony, uh, Philip K. Dick, and making audiobooks for the first time ever. And it's so wonderful to go back and listen uh, to these classic science fiction books. Um, the, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't read The uh, Stranger in a Strange Land or the, uh, or the I, Robot or the Foundation series, they've got the entire Foundation series from Asimov on there. And uh, Dune is another one that you're just going to want to really uh, enjoy and listen to. And, of course, Audible is not just some robotic voice or even some kind of disinterested reader. They, they actually bring in actors, uh, often Broadway actors, because their studios are in New Jersey, who are reading uh, and bringing books to life. And that is, I think, an, a singular pleasure from Audible. You're listening to a book, you're getting every word in the book th that you would have gotten had you bought the physical volume. But it's brought to life. If you're into Star Wars, of course, The Force Awakens has been novelized. And Mark Tyson, we'll listen to a little bit of this. This is the official novelization. He's hearing, despite himself. No spoilers here. And in response, the figure of Kylo Ren turned. Oh! Oh, I can't wait to listen to this one. Uh, I love it. Here's the deal. You're going to get a free book. Maybe that's uh, your free book. If you loved uh, the new Star Wars movie, you want to listen to it, and, and you hear the music. They really dramatize it. Um, I, I'm, you see, how they've, uh, this is my page, so you see they have all these books because I'm, I'm, uh, I've decided we're going to go be in France in the fall, and I want to learn, relearn French. I studied it for four years in high school, forgot it all. And they have... There's a lot of educational stuff. So they have the complete Pimsleur French on here. Also one that I'm starting to do, Paul Noble uh, uh, with Collins does a really, I think, fun way to learn languages. They have French, Spanish, and German. They also have the great courses. And this, to me, is when they, when they picked up the great courses series, I was so happy. Um, these, the, I've listened to many of these. These are college professors. They pick the best professors in the, wor in the world to kind of recreate their college courses. Uh, and you can listen to them. And it's like, it's like getting a college education. And it's, it's part of your Audible subscription. You could get these for free. In fact, sometimes they do this. This is wonderful. Robert Greenberg does the greatest course, I think, on the great courses, which is how to listen to classical music. And I, uh, I listen to it and learn so much. He's got a brief history of holiday music. And as Audible often does, this is a freebie for, for members. So they, uh, this is a free course on holiday music, the history of holiday music. Um, but if you want to learn things like, uh, you know, cognitive behavioral therapy or building a better vocabulary, there's an education awaiting, too, at Audible. We don't talk about that a lot. I wanted to mention that. So here's the deal. You're going to go to audiblepodcast.com. That's the website, audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. And you're going to pick a book. You'll be signing up for the gold plan. That means you're subscribing in a book a month. It's a very economical way to build your library. But your first month's free, so you cancel any time in the first 30 days. You'll pay nothing. Not only do you get to keep the book you picked, you'll also get the daily digest of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal. Audible has apps for every platform, Windows, Windows Phone, iOS, Android, Beautiful apps that make it fun and easy to listen. You can listen on a Chromebook, too, or any web browser. They have web browser-based listening as well. So you can listen anywhere, anytime. And, uh, and I as you probably know, I love books, and I love Audible, and I think you will, too. So give it a try free. we got a free book for you at audiblepodcast.com slash triangulation. Uh, I'm listening to the new uh, Neil Stevenson right now, Seven Eves. So good. So good. Unfortunately, some books you have to purchase. Not unfortunately for, for <laughs> Simon Monk. And, and look at the illustrations and go through the diagrams and see the code samples. I mean, I think it'd be fun to have this read out loud, but 
I don't know if it will really, really work. Int LED equals 13 semicolon slash slash. <laughs> the setup routine runs once when you press reset, that kind of thing. Very hard to yeah. Uh, yeah. What's your yeah, favorite project in here? I think it's the um, haptic communicator. So the idea behind this is that um, you've all seen the, the situation where somebody's out of, out of the base and they're talking to somebody else who's out of the base, another survivor, using a walkie-talkie. And you press the alarm. And somebody always speaks at just the wrong moment, don't they, when, yeah. and it att attracts attention. So the idea behind this is that uh, it's um, a little Arduino project. So and funny. you make a pair of these projects. And each project just has a button on it and a little vibration motor, the sort you'd find in a cell phone. So when you press your button, the vibration motor on the other handset vibrates and vice versa so that you can send little sort of buzzing messages to each other. So you'd have to work out a code beforehand or learn Morse code or something. So, but you could just keep it simple and say, you know, three three beeps for three buzzes for the for the zombies around or one buzz for all clear so that you can communicate with each other with, uh, without uh, having to use voice or make any kind of noise this you do this one you get your bachelor's degree this is one of the final projects <laughs> in here one of the most complicated you write i think it's yeah it's probably the most complicated there's quite a lot of soldering involved in that yeah. I, I build it on top of um uh, an arduino proto shield so you haven't got to make pcbs or oh, anything good. like that oh, that you can just but there is some soldering to do for that oh what fun though here's a great yeah. parts list in the appendix so everything you need is in here where to get it and if you have never uh, as uh, simon says soldered i we i'll never get used to that in the states we say solder and everybody gets mad at me in the rest of the world for mispronouncing it. There is an L in there, so I understand. Uh, they will tell you how to solder, how to... Uh, am I saying that right? Solder? Solder? Well, that's what we say, sounds but you say so solder. I know, I'm so not, I've heard that, and I've always thought it strange, because generally you have much more sensible spellings than we do. We, you know, it's not color, it's color. Yeah, it's not aluminium. <laughs> i adopt a whole load of your, your spellings, but um, I don't know why you say solder wrong. I know, and I ever, you know, we have a lot of listeners in the UK and Australia, uh, and I think even Canada, who say, Leah, why do you keep saying solder, as if that's how it's pronounced? That's, yeah. You know? Uh, it's just, you know, it's, I, I have to work it out. Maybe I'll put that on my schedule. Uh, and here's a little primer in uh, Arduino uh, software, which is great, and, and uh, that's, that's useful, too. I love this book. No Starch Press. It's uh, $25. It's on Amazon. Whoops, you're show, I'm showing you the back. I don't know why. But, uh, but this is important. Take charge of your environment. Escape him as in da danger. Communicate with other survivors. Simon Monk is the author. Many great books. You'll find a lot of them on his own uh, website. Uh, which is simonmonk.org, because as we all know, writing a book is a non-profit enterprise. Sometimes <laughs> seems that way. And don't forget, <laughs> he has the Monk Makes store where you can get some of the uh, parts uh, you need and a great blog, which I highly recommend, uh, so you can see the story behind a lot of these projects. Uh, Simon, it's a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you for joining us yeah, today. Yeah, a pleasure talking to you be, too. be a great holiday uh, gift, I think. In fact, I'm keeping this one. I know exactly <laughs> who I'm giving it to. Thanks, Simon. Oh, great. Have a great, okay, nice have a great holiday. To you. Happy, happy Christmas and happy New Year as well. And okay. to you. Thank nice you. talking to you. Thank you. Right, bye, Leah. We do triangulation every Monday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's 1900 UTC. We'd love it if you could watch live. Join us in the chat room. I always like the feedback from the chat room. But uh, if you can't, don't worry. You can merely uh, download a copy. It's so easy. Twit.tv slash TRI is our website for triangulation. And, of course, you can subscribe and download from all the different podcatchers. This show is very popular uh, and on iTunes and, and everywhere you go, uh, including our new Apple TV apps, the Roku apps, uh, iOS, Android, Windows Phone. It, just search for Twit. You'll find it. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Triangulation. Bye-bye.